Throughout time, man has gazed at the sun, the heavens, and the moon, and studied their movements. As civilizations became more complex, a means of understanding the seasons and organizing time became necessary. And nowhere is this more evident than in the Salt River Valley of Arizona, home of the hugely successful and industrious ancient Hohokam Indians. Todd Bostwick, the archaeologist for the city of Phoenix, has made dozens of groundbreaking discoveries over the past 10 years, shedding light on the mysteries of the ancient sky watchers and the legacies they left behind. Scattered across the Valley of the Sun and centered around the cities of Phoenix, Tempe, Mesa, Apache Junction, Glendale, and others are recent discoveries of numerous Hohokam sites consisting of rock art, structures, and carefully placed stones that once helped the Hohokam chart the seasons, the days, and in some cases, accurately split the day in half. A prominent hilltop in North Phoenix called Shaw Butte has all the elements of an ancient observatory as defined in modern terms. Numerous rock art has been packed into the boulders at various places to signify a morning summer solstice sunrise or the setting of the sun for a spring equinox, either of which would be important calendar markings for the Hohokam. As the sun is setting on this equinox day, we can see that the sun is going to go down on the horizon exactly over these three circle dots. Another example of the beautiful alignment that the Hokan were able to obtain with the sun and petroglyphs at this site. Sometimes, small sun watcher figures are seen in conjunction with circle dots. These circle dots are markings to signify the sun. Todd has found instances of several Sun Watcher petroglyphs that point the way of the sun, such as this winter solstice sunrise, which told the Hohokam that the sun has now reached its lowest point on its travel south across the horizon. Really thrilling to watch the sunrise in the same location that the Hohokam watched it centuries ago. This event would likely have been celebrated to ensure that the sun turned around, repeating its journey back across the horizon to the north as it had done for centuries before. A similar ceremony would happen during the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, and the northernmost location of the sun. Various authorities in the field of Southwest archaeology offer their insight into the Hohokam culture and their astounding knowledge of the sun. These people were extremely adaptable, had a successful society for 14 centuries that evolved, that changed um, dramatically at some times, but they were able to adapt to those changing traditions. They developed a very harmonious lifestyle that allowed them to live in what many people consider an extremely hostile environment. In the harsh desert environment, the Hohokam built and sustained a very impressive culture for more than a millennium, from AD 1 to AD 1450. Estimates put the population of the Salt River Valley at that time from 30,000 to 50,000 inhabitants, and the total Arizona population of these ancient people could well have topped 100,000. That there are early People here in the Southwest were highly intelligent people. They were just as intelligent as we are. They didn't have the high technologies that we do, but they did have uh, technologies developed that, uh, that they needed for their society. Managing a successful population and culture of this size required a strong political system and a means to schedule events and organize a large workforce for the building of miles of irrigation canals. 
the caring for tens of thousands of acres of farmlands, and for a variety of building projects. This required a calendar of some sort, and a means of keeping it accurate throughout the year, and equally important from year to year. Clearly that sun chief is designated to observe the sky, to use those observations to establish the ritual life of the community. Anybody else in the village is paying attention to the sun. They know what time it is. But by virtue of the office, there is authority, and it is, in fact, endorsed by the official process of making the observation. In the center of the Valley of the Sun stands a large, isolated rock formation known as Papago Buttes. Located in this complex of rocks is a natural feature called a hole in the rock. This opening provides the summer solstice sun a means to shine through, letting the sunlight slowly walk its way down the wall until finally reaching the floor of this special place. At this spot, the Hohokam ground out a matati slick, which was most likely used as a ceremonial place to grind special corn as the summer solstice sun flooded the cavity with light around midday. Dozens of sunrises, sunsets, and interactions of light with petroglyphs from different locations around the valley visually demonstrate the vast network of archaeological sites where the Hohokam sky watchers carried on their most important work. The task of keeping track of the movements of the sun. Special interest will focus on the rock shelter at Shaw Butte and the roof of the rock shelter as constructed by the Hohokam. Every time I'm in this rock shelter, I'm amazed at how the Hohokam manipulated the stones in the roof here to create light patterns that mark important solar events in the Hohokam calendar. The sunlight was allowed to stream through specific openings during the midday of the spring and fall equinox and the winter and summer solstice. During both the fall and spring equinox, a beam of light comes through a hole in the ceiling and marches along the edge of this crack for about an hour, from about 11 a.m. until noon. Various patterns of light move over the floor and the walls of this structure, signifying the midday for the Hohokam and providing an additional important marking device to calibrate their seasonal calendar. Right around noon, the light disappears as a dot through a notch at the top of the crack. It is also interesting to note that the typical ending times of these light shows is within a few minutes of actual midday of the spring and fall equinox and the winter and summer solstice. To this day, this structure is still accurate. From the cool, pleasant days of winter in the desert to the blistering 112 degree days of the summer, we follow in the footsteps of the Hohokam to mark the days of the year, just as they did centuries ago. Journey to the places of the ancient Skywatcher. <laughs>